Hi, my name is Anthony O'Connor. I'm a licensed CM acupuncturist and herbalist, and today we're going to talk about tongues. A few weeks ago, Tim Spector, a professor of genetic epidemiology at King's College London and lead investigator at the Zoe Symptom Study app, reported and named COVID tongue as a possible newly discovered symptom of COVID-19. By this he was referring to a number of noted alterations to the tongue, including scalloping, mouth ulcers, patchy coating or geographic tongue, etc. He wasn't the only person to notice this. Back in June 2020, a study published in a dentistry journal described examples of COVID-19 patients who experienced oral ulceration or oral blisters. A study in a hospital in Madrid involving over 600 COVID patients reported that more than one in four of them reported swollen tongues or other kinds of tongue symptoms. However, since then, a number of experts have weighed in and seem to be saying that COVID tongue might not be the silver diagnostic bullet we were all hoping for, as there is no one unified change in tongue appearance across all COVID patients, and also some of the noted alterations in tongue appearance are commonly found amongst the population at large. So what does it all mean? Are tongue changes diagnostically relevant? Well, the short answer is yes. Chinese medicine has been using tongue diagnosis as one of its fundamental theories for thousands of years. And I'll be honest, Western medicine's lack of interest in tongue diagnosis has always kind of confused me. It's a very quick, safe and convenient way to gather lots of information about the patient. Everyone knows that your tongue can change, particularly when you're sick. However, aside from a few very, very specific illnesses and some very, very specific and extreme changes in tongue appearance associated with them, Tongue diagnosis is largely overlooked in the Western medical canon. I will say, after spending three days gathering images of diseased tongues for this video, I may be starting to see where some other aversion is coming from. I think one of the reasons tongue diagnosis hasn't taken off so much in Western medicine is because the tongue reflects not just the state of the pathogen, but also the patient simultaneously. Two patients might present with the same pathogen, but might manifest different signs based on their underlying constitutions. So for example, one patient might manifest mouth ulcers, another a yellow tongue coating. Chinese medicine recognizes both these as signs of heat in the body and will group them together accordingly, whereas Western medicine usually won't see a connection between the two. Or they'll see the mouth ulcers themselves as being the condition rather than a sign of something larger. The same can be said about candida. A lot of changes in tongue coating are just chalked up to general candida. From a Chinese medicine perspective, the tongue is an internal organ which is visible to the outside world and therefore plays a vital role in displaying information about the patient's health. CM practitioners are looking at shape, colour, coating and moisture of the tongue body as well as the state of the sublingual veins. Each of these attributes of the tongue's appearance is affected by a different system within the body. A deviation from the norm in terms of one of these states of appearance indicates an aberration in the function of the related system. But again, because the tongue is constantly displaying information not just about the pathogen but also the patient, all of these signs need to be interpreted. Also, they can be affected by external conditions such as whether the person scrapes their tongue, whether they have braces or whether they've just drank a cup of coffee. I once had a friend come to me one morning with a thick black coating on his tongue and he asked me what was going on with him. I told him he was either going into multiple organ failure or he had fallen asleep with an antacid in his mouth. Thankfully it was the latter. Interpretation is important. Outside of Chinese medicine we're starting to see some more widespread acceptance of tongue diagnosis in certain extreme conditions. So for example tongue deviation as an early warning sign of stroke. This is something Chinese medicine has known about for thousands of years. Hopefully we'll see more of this crossover in the future. As for the diagnostic relevance of COVID tongue specifically, well, COVID itself is a strange and very complicated condition. Even in Chinese medicine, it involves the complex interaction of several different pathogenic factors, and therefore its signs will necessarily be complex and they will change as both the disease and treatment progresses. The Jade Screen Project, run by a dedicated group of Chinese herbal medicine practitioners, are working to provide free Chinese herbal formulas to protect and support frontline workers who have been affected by COVID in the UK. 
As part of this project, they've been compiling a database of tongues and other diagnostically relevant information relating to COVID and systematically evaluating it to see what we can learn. They've kindly agreed to share a few of these images with me and I think they demonstrate the point excellently. While there isn't a single silver bullet unified COVID tongue, there absolutely are measurable aberrations in the appearance of the tongue that change over time with the progression of treatment and the illness. These changes are important, measurable, and diagnostically relevant once they can be interpreted correctly. Even if there is no silver bullet COVID tongue diagnosis, hopefully this can start a conversation. Quick and accurate testing is of paramount importance during an epidemic and we need to use all the tools we have to fight it. In a situation like we have now, I can't see why there couldn't be a system where a GP that's on the fence about a COVID diagnosis with a patient couldn't take a photo of the tongue and send it to a licensed CM practitioner for analysis. Now, this is not going to be a blood test, it's not going to be a definitive answer, but it will provide the GP with another data point. You know, this could be the difference between hospitalizing somebody, sending them for a PCR test, getting a second opinion or whatever. Again, it's about using all the tools we have to fight the illness. And while COVID itself might be a uniquely complex disease, the next pandemic may present with much clearer and more measurable tongue signs. In that case, a system like I described with Chinese medicine and Western medicine could prove invaluable both sides using their own strengths to work together for the benefit of everyone. That's all for this episode. A very special thanks to Andrew Flower at the Jade Screen Project for his help with this video. Thank you, Andrew. If anyone would like to support them, the link to their GoFundMe is in the description to this video. I highly recommend checking them out. They're doing absolutely excellent work. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, please leave them down in the comments. And as always, thank you for watching.